So this is the Rigel DPA32, which is a really nice power supply made by Rigel for a very affordable price. And it only has one major problem, which is that it has a horribly noisy fan. Now, you might think that it's really easy uh, to just change the fan and get it silent, and that's what I thought. But there has one major trap that I actually fell into, and I'm going to show you how you can avoid that. I'm going to take it apart and fix my mistake. Just to show the trap that I ran into one quick time, if you just install the fan without uh, any other modifications, then the uh, power supply might not recognize the fan and it will not turn on. So you'll see that it started up fine, but as soon as I try to activate the channels, it will activate them for a second and then it will say the fan stops, stop the output. So it will automatically shut down all outputs. So as a first step I'm going to remove the two Torx 25 screws that are in the handle. Then you'll need to remove the two UNC screws that are holding the RS-232 jack. I've already done this here. And the four screws uh, that hold the back rubber things uh, with a Torx 20. Then you can turn it on its front. Note that I have some foam underneath here so uh, I don't scratch the display. And you can just slide the case open. Uh, be aware that this might void your warranty. There are six Torx 10 screws around this metal casing that we'll remove next. This plate will now slide to the inside and we can flip it up and it will be held down by one connector here on this side which we'll remove before we can proceed. So this is what it looks like when it's opened up. This is the only connector that we needed to remove. The fan is held into place by four Torx 10 screws and it can be easily changed now. So this is the original fan that I removed from the power supply and here we have the connection to the fan that I have already installed here. Now you'll notice that they don't have a speed indicator pin so they are only two pin. Um, so the only reason why the power supply would reject the new fan is the power consumption. I'm going to measure that now and we'll see if there's a difference. So you'll see the original fan has about 160 milliamps at 12 volts, so when it's running at full blast. And under the same conditions running at full blast, the replacement fan only has 97 milliamps. If you do the math, you'll uh, see that the old fan with 12 volts and 160 milliamps comes to about 75 ohms and the new one without any additional resistor or anything uh, comes at 124 ohms because it has 97 milliamps at 12 volts. So in order to get about the same current consumption, uh, you will need a parallel resistor to your replacement fan to get the uh, current consumption up to the level of the old one. So if you do that you'll come up with 190 ohms in my case. So the next closer one would be 220 ohms. The problem is that a 220 ohm parallel resistor at 12 volts consumes about 54 milliamps and that amounts to about 0.64 watts. So you can't just take a standard um, one quarter watt resistor which is why I have chosen this 2 watt resistor that I've shrunk wrap to the cable here. So now let's measure what current this new resistor fan combination needs. 
So that's about 140 milliamps, which should be close enough to the 160 milliamps. Now I'll just plug it in and see if it works. And the moment of truth. You'll see that it won't shut off the outputs now, since the current that the fan consumes is apparently enough for the Rigol to think that there is actually a fan installed. So in case you're wondering what replacement fan I used, I used a Noctua NFR8, which cost me about 8 euros. And for me, the replacement was really worth it, because um, before the device was actually unusably loud, it was really annoying in the workplace and now it's uh, almost completely silent so it's uh, very nice and it doesn't annoy me anymore. I've actually recorded the noise of the startup procedure with the old and new fan with very high amplification so you'll even hear my clock in the background. I'm sorry for that but um, just uh, listen for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this short video and maybe you too will now avoid the warranty on your DPA32. Thanks for watching. Bye.